Hello, everyone. My name is Umut. It's so nice to see all of you here. Due to the ongoing circumstances, we are seeing each other online this time. This is the first time I attend the Polyglot Gathering, and I hope to attend other gatherings in future as well. I would like to introduce myself shortly to you. I'm from Izmir, Turkey. I was born and raised in the city and lived here most of my life. I come from IT background and languages are my biggest passion since high school. I've been studying a few languages for several years and I am deeply interested in studying and learning languages, belonging to Northwest Caucasian language family, specifically Circassian language, also because of my ties to the Circassian culture. So, what is an endangered language? An endangered language is a language that is at risk of falling out of use because of its speakers passing away or preferring to speak other dominant languages more for various reasons. So UNESCO has a classification system that shows how in trouble a language is. Vulnerable, most children in the community speak the language, but its use is restricted to certain places like home, village, and cultural events. Definitely in danger, children no longer learn the language as a mother tongue in home. Severely in danger, languages spoken by older generations, while the younger generation may understand it, they don't speak it with their children anymore or among themselves. Particularly in danger, the remaining speakers of that language are older generation, and they speak the language only partially and infrequently. And extinct this, as you may also assume, there are no speakers of that language left. So why Circassian language? It has the largest diaspora in the world spread among various countries. Each diaspora community faces its own challenges related to the use of the language and keeping it alive. While being spoken widely among the community until the generation before millennials, currently the language is well on its trajectory to fall out of use if necessary actions aren't taken to revive its usage among the population. So, there are millions of people living throughout the Circassian diaspora, but generally, I wouldn't say Circassian culture is known globally. So that's also uh, the main reason why I've chosen to introduce the Circassian language and also the current, reason, the current situation it's facing. So the Circassian language belongs to the Northwest Caucasian language family. It's spoken by Circassian people who are indigenous people of Northern Caucasus and currently living, living in their homeland as well as in diaspora countries. There are two main Circassian dialects defined by literary standards, Adige, which is also known as Western Circassian, and Kabardian, which is also known as East Circassian. The Circassian language is called Adigavze in Circassian. Adiga means Circassian, and Bze means language. Thus, Adigavze means the Circassian language. The word Circassian is an exonym. Circassians refer to themselves as Adiges, but they are known to outside world as Circassians. So coming to dialects, West Circassian dialects have the Black Sea Coast dialects, which have Janay dialect, Matukai dialect, Shapsuk dialect, and the Cuban River, River, River dialects has Jaduk dialect, Temirgoy, Abzah dialect, Namhaik dialect, and Yekarugai dialect, and Hatukwai dialect. So East Circassian dialects has Kabardian, which has West Kabardian, Central Kabardian, Eastern Kabardian, and North Kabardian, and also the Bessanay dialect. So, some facts about the Circassian diaspora. Circassians were displaced of their homeland following the Russo-Circassian War in 1864 to Ottoman Empire. And afterwards, they were uh, displaced to places in other former countries in the Ottoman Empire. An estimated 2 million people live in Turkey, having the largest Circassian diaspora in the world. Around 100,000 people of Circassian origin live in Syria, 60,000 in Jordan, and a few thousand in the village of Kvarkama in Israel. 
A further 50,000 people live in Western Europe and United States in total. Or it's estimated around 15,000. So here you see the map of the Sarkasian homeland around 1750. As you see, there are uh, the West Circassia region, where the, uh, I mean, it's this one is a more uh, language-based division. Like you can think like Adige is West Circassian and uh, Kab Kabarde is East Circassian. Uh, there is no big difference between Adige and Kabarde, by the way. They are mutual, mutually intelligible. They understand each other. However, there are some only dialectic differences. So uh, they understand each other. Uh, quite well, but they are the two main dialects. So as you see, West Circassia here is highlighted light green, and East Circassia is highlighted with dark green. Also worth to mention that this uh, Circassian homeland doesn't have strict borders. Like uh, it doesn't have borders starting from one point and ending one and in another point, just like we have in countries today in the world. But uh, it, th this map quite gives you uh, the situation uh, where they were living uh, during that time. And when it comes to resettlement of Circassian's Ottoman Empire, as you see, the dark green col uh, color, where it's highlighted with dark green, uh, it's the Circassian homeland just before the, they are dispersed Ottoman Empire and Anatolia is contemporary Turkey uh, after they were dispersed uh, to Ottoman Empire some of the Circassians were settled in the Balkans most of them stayed in Turkey and uh, other Circass other uh, people uh, were spread across Jordan Syria and Israel, which were the former countries in the Ottoman Empire. So I'd like to tell about the historical background of Circassian diaspora in Turkey. After losing the war against Tsarist Russia and arriving in former Ottoman Empire and overladen boats, Circassians strived to establish themselves in an entirely new geography. Circassians have successfully maintained their identity and language until 90s. Afterwards, urbanization from villages to big cities have changed the situation. Priorities of the new generation became finding better jobs and securing the economic situation. This led to the demise of language usage. So, current situation of Circassian language in Turkey is, Circassian language is currently facing assimilation in Turkey. Young generation isn't learning the language to a wide extent. Circassian organizations are providing language courses in order to prevent assimilation in the new generation. For the first time in the period of 2013 and 2014, Circassian Language and Literature Department was opened in a university in Turkey with the aim of teaching the language more effectively to the community in the coming years. And this really helped the community out. Uh, Lecturers who graduated from that department are now teaching in uh, community courses throughout the country, and it really improves uh, the prospect of learning the language for young people. So when it comes to the current situation of Circassian language in homeland, in Northern Caucasus, where Circassians live, the language is also facing the threat of assimilation. Young people, are learning the dominant Russian language more, preferring it because of job prospects and survival. Due to domestic policies, compulsory education in Circassian language became optional and teaching hours were reduced. In rural areas, language is more widely spoken than urban areas. This was my observation I got when I visited the homeland in 2019, first time in my life. Current situation of Circassian language in Jordan. Urbanization from villages to cities has precipitated the assimilation of the Circassian language. Currently, Circassian is very rarely spoken among the new generation. Interestingly, all members of the community express a desire to promote it. However, 
they aren't actually motivated to maintain it. Thus, they prefer to use the dominant language, Arabic. Parents generally don't speak it to their children, and it's no longer the mother tongue of children at all. So, at the same time, there are a few attempts to revive the language there. A TV channel called NART TV is making broadcasts in Circassian language. So, a few factors that make it harder to learn this language. Circassian language is a unique language belonging to Northwestern Caucasian family of languages and thus has very little commonality compared to other languages belonging to Indo-European language family like Russian or Turkish, Arabic, which are dominant languages in diaspora countries. It has very little commonality and I can say that this commonality is not based on grammar. It's more based on maybe a few common words, uh, but that's it. Other than this, Circassian language phonetically sounds very different and it's a very uh, unique language indeed. There are many resources available online for learning the language. Those which exist are more helpful for people who already have some knowledge of the language. Social reasons like immigration from villages to cities. So when people move from villages to cities, uh, they're not living together. Uh, so uh, language falls out of use sooner. And intermarriage. Uh, we can think it like this. When one side of the family, mother, uh, is from another background, and let's say father is Circassian, of course it could be vice versa as well. But in that case, especially if mo either mother or father lives in a different country, which the, the dominant language is different than Circassian, then eventually children learn the dominant language more than their own uh, culture of background. Factors that precipitate, precipitate assimilation. Movement from villages to cities. Just as a while ago, as I mentioned, when people are living in villages, they stick to their own cultures and uh, they speak the same language with each other without having the need to switch to another language or uh, having having the need to speak that language because they can understand each other. And this is the case if, if I were to speak for Turkey, where I'm living. Uh, in most Circassian villages, uh, people still understand each other as language is still spoken. And uh, before urban, urbanization, uh, there was no problem related to use of language. Because everyone uh, is living in the same village and it is, it's a community. So there is no loss of language. But when it, when because of some reasons like job prospects, economical reasons, other reasons like marrying someone, people move to bigger cities or more urbanized areas, and then they start being more uh, scattered. And, and they're not unified like they were before. So because of this, uh, they are using other languages more in their daily life. And over time, it has its own implications in the usage of language. Preferring dominant languages more because of job opportunities and economical factors. So people uh, prioritize some languages more than others because of several reasons. They want to learn languages which will be more beneficial to them in the future. They prefer languages uh, which are spoken by more people and which will allow them to speak with more people and which will eventually also improve their job prospects in the future and career prospects. Globalization and impact of media and culture. So as you all already know, the world is becoming even more globalized. Because of this, uh, people are more exposed to other dominant cultures more than their local ones. And this inevitably has effect on their own language as well. And thus, this is also the case in Circassian language. Circassians are already living uh, scattered 
among various countries. And also combining the effects of globalization, um, they are more exposed to other cultures than their own, especially nowadays. Uh, their language, this has an effect on their language uh, com coming out of falling out of use. And domestic policies in homeland and diaspora countries. So, Circassian so people, other than their homeland, they have majority of population uh, other than their homeland, outside of their homeland. So, the biggest diaspora uh, of Circassian people is in Turkey. Turkey has the most number of Circassian people living in the world. And other than this, we have Jordan, Syria, and also Israel, and also Western Europe uh, to some degree as well. But talking for the countries where they live, which are called diaspora countries, uh, each country has its own domestic policy related to the use of language. This, this uh, varied from time to time, also depending on the political atmosphere of the, home, of the diaspora countries. Sometimes these were restrictions against the use of language. However, sometimes uh, it, these were, there were positive attitudes towards preservation of the language. As uh, I mentioned a while ago in Turkey, the government is uh, train, uh, opened uh, training lectures. There's a newly established department of Circassian literature in the university, and this really helps in reviving the language. So there are some recent good developments concerning the diaspora as well. Most importantly, thanks to internet, Circassian people throughout the world are connecting to each other more and organize common activities together. Some of these activities include language preservation, such as preparation of language teaching materials, cartoons, and there is a organization called Massive Foundation in the United States, which has started a cartoon project called Little Aslan, aimed at teaching the language to the children. So, what can be done for reviving the language? Obviously, uh, this is a complex answer. For reviving the language, many factors should happen at the same time. Circassian youth should first have to make certain why it needs to learn the language. There should be physical or online gatherings organized to help the Circassian community in order to raise awareness and discuss the importance of learning the language for maintaining the cultural identity, and of, of course, also language. More language teaching materials, also covering basic levels of the language, should be produced. These could be books, online videos, and mobile games focused on teaching the language. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. I hope that I could introduce you to the Circassian language a bit and enlighten uh, about the current situation it's facing. Now, I would like to answer your questions. So first question is, hello, where we can find a list of languages by a level by a level of endangerment. Um, if you search on the internet, there are a few websites uh, which has a list of languages uh, related to the level of being endangered, categorized. Like you can find uh, from, just like in the categories you have seen a while ago, uh, vulnerable uh, and uh, more endangered, I'm going to that slide. Vulnerable, definitely endangered, severely endangered, critically endangered, extinct, which, uh, which are dead languages. You can find all of them categorized. Just a search on Google will help you out with this. How similar are Circassian and Georgian? Do they have a common basic vocabulary? Well, I can't say I know a lot about Georgian language, but... Um, what I can say right now is uh, Georgian language has a different alphabet. Uh, it has a different grammar, uh, certainly has a different grammar than the Circassian language, but 
they have many common words between them. Yes, they do have a common basic vocabulary between them. Third question is, is there an organized communication and cultural exchange between diasporas in the different countries, Russia, Turkey, and Jordan? That's a very good question. Thank you for asking it. Yes, there is organized communication. And uh, since uh, media technologies like internet uh, have improved in the last several years, uh, the diaspora is much better organized, uh, although in the previous years, uh, you know, before the collapse of Soviet Union, uh, of course, there were no communication between diasporas uh, concerning homeland and rest of the countries because they couldn't communicate with each other, maybe very little. But after uh, the borders were opened and now concerning that technology allows people to communicate more effectively, uh, the diaspora also communicates between themselves and they also uh, communicate with the uh, homeland much more. And they're also trying their best to improve their tires. Um, as an, uh, another question, are there any materials on the internet to learn Circassian? Can you share it with us? Um, there are a few materials available on the internet. Uh, you can find uh, you can find many materials, uh, mostly videos teaching the Circassian language. Uh, but I have to say that uh, the number of materials is not so much, uh, is not a lot. So uh, I don't remember I, uh, a direct link to give right now, but uh, there are a few videos uh, available on YouTube related to uh, teaching Circassian language. And also, there are a few apps uh, that teach Circassian language you can find, mobile apps. How much time did it take to you to learn this language and how did you learn it? Well, uh, I can say this to you. Uh, right now, I'm not uh, very fluent in Circ uh, on Circassian language. In Circassian language, because uh, it was a different process uh, than learning, uh, you know, other languages like most European languages. Because if you know one language of a specific from a specific family, you can learn other language more easily, right? But Circassian language is very unique. It has a very uh, extensive grammar. It's so hard to read it, uh, but I can tell you that uh, I visited the homeland last year, and uh, being uh, visiting the homeland and being with uh, among the local people really helps out when it comes to learning this language. Uh, I've been studying it uh, for like uh, I would say two or three years extensively. Uh, as I as I said, uh, talking with people and also uh, re reading some materials, using some materials. But when it comes to Circassian people. Attending a course or talking with the people who really speak this language will help out more. Cite the new department in university. Are there other concrete policies to support Circassians in Turkey, Russia, the homeland, Jordan, or Israel? Well, uh, if you mean concrete policies by government, uh, uh, there, are some, uh, there are some plans, discussions of opening a Circassian TV channel. Uh, but there are no other policies right now, as, as far as I know, for Turkey. In Russia, there isn't. Um, well, the, the language uh, is uh, the teaching of language already became optional there, not mandatory. And I don't know any other policies that support learning Circassian there more. In Jordan, um, uh, there are. Uh, a few schools which are trying to teach Circassian. And I think uh, the Jordan government is also helping a lot in the preservation of the culture. And it come, when it comes to Israel, uh, is, there's uh, Kvar Kama village in Israel. And I know that uh, there were lecturers 
who were trained in the native homeland Caucasus and returned back to uh, Kvarkama village. So Circassians could maintain their identity in Israel uh, well. This is, of course, in line with government policies as well. Uh, so other than government policies, I can tell about Circassian organizations are trying to show more effort in the preservation of the language. The other question is, I see that Circassian and Ubuk languages are related. Ubuk is known for having very few vowels. Is Circassian the same? Uh, Circassian and Ubuk languages uh, are related to each other, uh, but uh, they are different. Uh, Circassian is uh, not the same. Uh, Circassian has more vowels in. The other question is, are there speakers of the language in Izmir? Yes, there are. Uh, but uh, again, it's not related to the city. It's not related to one city. Of course, Izmir is uh, not the big city of Turkey. Uh, there has to be speakers of that language, but young generation don't speak it that much uh, widely anymore. Uh, so there, there should be, there are speakers in Izmir, just as maybe less in number than there are speakers in Istanbul or Ankara. Other question is, is there any TV and or radio that runs in Circassian? Or are there any plans to start some? Nowadays, there are many uh, internet TVs and also radios, uh, social media channels that runs in Circassian. Uh, new ones uh, are also plan uh, being planned to be opened uh, by some uh, Organize, organizers, and I think the number will only increase. So there are many, many uh, platforms available that broadcast in Circassian. The other question is, what are pros and cons, cons of learning this language? Well, uh, if I were to speak for Circassians at this point, of course, they will. This will allow them to maintain their identity and uh, learn their own culture. Uh, this will allow them to be, be able to speak with their own people, uh, both in their own countries and also in other diaspora countries. This will increase cooperation between them. This will increase understanding between them, and it's also an individual plus for them. For people uh, who, are, who are not from Circassian background. This is a rare language, endangered language, which is not a language uh, many people in the world knows. Uh, actually, many people I ever met before in my life haven't even heard uh, such a thing as Circassian, let alone the language. So it will be a different taste, maybe, uh, like a unique experience for them if they learn this language, uh, if they are language preserver if they are pre uh, language preservationists and working for language preservation, then it will really help them out, especially if they are working on Caucasian languages. Is there a literary tradition in Circassian or is it mostly a spoken language? Uh, there is a literary tradition in Circassian, although uh, we don't have many recorded materials uh, related to the language. Because after Circassian people are dispersed to other countries, uh, not many things were left related to like written sources related to their language. Uh, other question. Can you comment any interesting movies or documentaries set the areas where Circassian is spoken? There are a few, there are a few films and documentaries uh, based on Circassian people. Uh, and uh, it passes in the ethnic homeland of Circassian people. But I don't uh, really remember uh, any name of them right now. I don't remember any specific name. Can you create a Circassian course with the help of native speakers? Why not? I would love to do it. I 
I see there are materials to learn Circassian on 50languages.com. Have you checked them? Are them well done? Yes, I have checked those materials on 50languages.com. It was just a few days ago. Uh, the uh, the uh, materials are very well tailored to those of coming from any knowledge of language. Uh, it begins with greetings, uh, then uh, like daily expressions and other more advanced topics. And I really found the materials on 50languages.com useful. You can also hear the pronunciation of the words and it really helps out. How are relations between Circassians and other peoples of the Caucasus? Uh, yes, uh, to be honest, um, I was expecting to hear such a question, although it's not related to language. Well, I can say to you, uh, generally speaking, Circassians have, are well respected among other, other communities in the Caucasus. And uh, I can say they have good relationships with the peoples of Caucasus, uh, indeed. But, you know, this region is a bit volatile. Uh, things are changing quite fastly. And people have different understand. Sometimes people also in the northern west, northwestern Caucasus have sometimes different understandings of it. Uh, towards each other. So we can tell about changing understandings. But again, uh, in my opinion, people have very good relationship with them, between them. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope I could answer your questions. Uh, hope to see you in other gatherings in the future. One more question. I'm waiting for it. Okay, this is a very good question. Do diaspora Circassians usually write their language in Cyrillic or the scripts of the countries they live in? So, um, Circassian languages uh, was written with three scripts in its lifetime. Uh, once it was Latin, then uh, it was also written for Arabic for a short period, but uh, in the last, last centuries, it's only written with Cyrillic alphabet. So, since Cyrillic is the main alphabet of the Circassian language, Circassians, who are also living in the diaspora, have to write it with Cyrillic alphabet. Thus, they need to learn the Cyrillic uh, in order to be able to uh, write Circassian. No, they only use Cyrillic alphabet. And right now, uh, it is the only solution so far. It's the only way it should be like that. But they may return uh, the transliteration of words in Latin, with Latin alphabet or with Arabic at the same time as well. But the, the alphabet of Circassian language is Cyrillic. Are there any other questions? Okay, I hope uh, I could answer. Uh, I could. Uh, okay, thank you a lot. See you uh, in other gatherings then.